I'm Charlotte, this is Thai Mama Tries to Read. Um, I'm going to do a video today called the Final Fall Book Tag, um, which is an original tag by Tall Tales and I was tagged by Sean the Book Maniac. So these have all got autumnal themed questions but not necessarily provoking an autumnal themed read. Okay, so the first one is um, name a book with a vivid setting. There are, there are all like bits to these questions that I didn't write down because I had to literally scribble this down the last minute. So it's something like, you know, autumn is clear and crisp, name a book with a vivid setting, but I've just scribbled down the actual like basic prompt. So I'll put the full list of questions underneath and I'm really sorry to Tall Tales for having abbreviated what you originally did. Um, so vivid setting, I have gone for The Island of Apples by Glyn Jones. Uh, this is a book that I'm trying to convince and hopefully have convinced um, Sean to read as a buddy read with me, but I think I'm not sure, I think we're doing it next year now. Um, but yes, this is a book that stayed in my mind since I did it um, for A-level, I think I did it for. And I've read it several times since. And my dad, who is always a true test of whether a book is good, has also read it several times. Um, it's got the greatest first line ever, which is the first time I ever saw Carl Anthony, he was floating down past our house in the river. It's a great book, you can't regret it. The setting is amazing, it's very dreamlike. For good reason anyway yeah that's one of them um a beautiful book but with a heavy topic like loss or grief i have chosen wind from an enemy sky by darcy mcnichol um i love darcy mcnichol um uh, his books are often well they're often very very difficult emotionally to read um this is no different this is set in um it's a tragedy of good intentions gone hopelessly wrong it's the story of the Little Elk people, a fictional north northwestern tribe. Through the eyes of Antoine, grandson of the tribal leader, we see the tribe attempt to overcome their demoralisation at the hands of an advancing white civilization. So it's all about um, a company trying to build a dam that ends up disrupting a, a river that actually ends up flooding a sacred area of land. It's, it's a very, very bleak read, but it's so important and it's beautifully written. So, yeah, I love anything Darcy McNichol does. And as you can see, it's full of notes. <laughs> so that's that one. Um, a non-fiction book that taught you something new. So I have gone for this giant monster, Che Guevara, A Revolutionary Life by John Lee Anderson. It's humongous. And I just chose this because this was the first... I think this was the first serious book that I read and I chose to read on my own. So I was about 20, I think, and I just started working at a bookshop. And for some reason, this called to me because I wasn't particularly political any more than I've learned things from my dad. I wasn't particularly political personally. And then I picked this up and just ploughed through it. It took months because I just wasn't an educated reader at that time. And I loved it. Um, I, I wouldn't mind giving it another go, but... That is a commitment and a half. Um, okay, next question. A fictional family household you'd like to be part of? This was really tricky because I often read about quite, um, well, sort of quite chaotic families and difficult families and households. So you wouldn't, I think Sean said the same, you wouldn't necessarily want to be part of them. But I chose um, The Family in To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. This is my old school copy with all of my little notes in the front. Um, yeah, I love this book. I haven't read it for a long, long time. If I'd had a girl, I might have named her Scout. That was one of my top, top 10 names, but I had a little boy instead. So yeah, I love that book. I would more than happily be part of Atticus's family. Uh, full Coloured Spines. This one's easy. Okay, I had tons of these. I've gone for, gone for another Native American author, Simon Ortiz. He is a comb of Pueblo. And this is his book of poetry, Woven Stone, which is one of my favourite collections. Everything in here is incredible. Um, it's a journey across America, largely, where he's looking for the Native Americans. That's what some of the po poems are about. And he finds that they're everywhere. Um, and he writes about them. He writes about the land. He writes about being a father. He writes about his battle with alcoholism. Yeah, the whole thing is awesome. And... What I find really interesting is someone has made notes and there's also a little signature at the top and I can't quite work out if that really is his signature, which would match with the, some of these are my notes, but there's another note there, which has the same handwriting. And I'm just desperate to know whether this is actually his copy, not his copy, but maybe a copy of someone in his, one of his classes, because I'm sure he lectures now. 
I mean, why would they sell that? I can't think of it, but I like to dream. Um, this is a good spine, particularly for fall colours, but this is Sweetness and Light. I haven't read this. The Mysterious History of the Honeybee. Um, anything with a bee on, I tend to buy. I love bees, um, but I, I tend to buy and then don't read. So there, I need to learn my lesson. Um, and then another fall spine is uh, Peter Rush Firth's Pinkerton Sister which is a book I've tried and attempted, I think maybe two or three times to read and have not succeeded, but I've never gotten rid of it because I have loved what I've read. It's um, it's about a woman called, I think she's called Alice, Alice Pinkerton. Um, her neighbours consider her simpleton, but in reality, Alice's mind is razor sharp. She is 35 years of age and all she has is her books. Could be my biography. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think because I'm not, I wasn't as well read. I'm not particularly well read now, but I wasn't as well read when I first bought it. And in the subsequent times I've tried to read it, I've been doing my degree and whatnot. Um, you need to know a lot about other books to be able to get all the little intertextuality things that um, Peter Rushforth is saying. So especially with the classics, Oscar Wilde, Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe. There's lo I mean, there's loads of resonances within the book. So I feel like whenever I start reading it, I need to know more about those writers and I stop, go and read some of those writers and then I don't pick it up again. So if you've read loads of classics, I think that one is, should be right up your street. Um, someone telling a story. I've gone for Wuthering Heights. Uh, I, I think a lot of books are kind of narrated in the way of someone telling a story, but this one is a particularly layered telling. It's been ages since I've read it, but I think it's fairly well known to be um, somebody starts saying it and then it's a story that they heard and then it's a story that they heard. There's lots of sort of gateways you have to go through to actually get to the main plot. Um, I would love to read that again. That really changed changed me reading that book. That's uh, uh, dark, creepy read. I don't really read dark, creepy reads. I do have a few of them on my shelf, but I don't tend to read crime. And I do buy the odd horror, like Susan Hill. I've got um, Woman in Black, but I haven't read it. So I just went for this book, Naomi Klein, This Changes Everything, which is about um, the environmental catastrophe that awaits us. It was happening right, right now, especially in America and um, in places like Indonesia, it's happening right now. But this terrified me. I'm actually only here. Again, this is another classic. I'll read this while I'm doing a PhD. No, I won't because I've actually got tons of other stuff I'm meant to be reading. So I've only read this much of it. I really need to crack on with the rest of it before it becomes out of date. But I would thoroughly urge you to pick this up. It's she's done all the work for you. She puts it all together in such a clear way. She's a great writer, but yeah, you will probably start stockpiling like tins of beans if you haven't already started doing that. Um, short, heartwarming read. Okay, I chose Doodle Mum, uh, A Year of Family Life. Um, it's, a, it's by Doodle Mum because that's the, the name she works by. And it's beautiful. It's an illustrated year in the life of being a mum of three children. Let me find you a really nice one. There are to oh, odds. See, look, it's things like this. Just standing under this beautiful willow tree with her family. And there's loads of ones of the dog. Oh, this is another one of my favourites. I'd love to get this as a print. Um, blowing bubbles and blowing dandelions. It's just so perfect. Yeah, I love it. So it's not a read, but I think if you really need to cheer yourself up, sometimes you need something a little bit lighter than a read. Um, and then an old favourite again I just apologise for the brevity of these prompts because the prompts are really nicely done in the original format but I was just like madly scribbling because um small person is out and about and we'll be back any minute okay so book you want to come back to and I've picked Kinflix by Lisa Alpha I love this book so much this is a lovely virago spine I've never been massively fond of the cover picture that they chose I I've kind of grown to love it over the years and it does actually fit the book quite well but I just <laughs> I just don't think it would necessarily appeal to the sort of person who would actually enjoy this book so this is Ginny Babcock and she is witty za sexy zany um, and she's just too much for everybody and so the book goes through her life and it's interspersed with chapters from her mother who's um, in an old, I think she's in an old people's home or she's in a hospital. It's been like a decade since I've read this. But everything about it is amazing. It's about female empowerment. It's about sexuality. It's about being a mother. It's about having friends. It's about your first boyfriend. It's about dying. It's just, it hits all, all those things. And I don't really know if she's written anything else, but God, I should really, 
I should really read another one of hers because I truly, truly love that book. And I've never heard anyone else who's read it. So if you've read that or any of the others that I've mentioned, I'd love to know. Um, and then the last question really is cosy reading accessories. I, I'm, I don't have any. I don't even have a Kindle. I've often sort of mused over the idea of getting a paperwhite, um, despite my fairly long standing hatred of Amazon. Um, I do buy from Amazon occasionally, so that just goes to show that my morals are not as strong as um, my need for cheap books. But I do, I really resent the idea of giving them a lot of money for something that I can read books in the flesh with. I can see how they're very, very good, and actually, my friend at work is obsessed with her new Kindle. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't even have, I have a book light, a little purple one that looks like a lamp, but to be honest, Idris just mostly uses it as a torch and loses it in various places in the house. So when I actually need it, I don't know where it is. So I have nothing. I sometimes use, I actually often use a bookmark. You can read uh, more quickly with a bookmark and I'm fairly certain that there's some science behind the fact that you retain more information when you read with a bookmark. If you're a bookish person, you probably already know that. Um, I do find that if I'm using a bookmark, I don't just let my eyes glide down the page and then reach the end of a paragraph and realise I don't know what I've just read. Um, and then tags. Oh, I haven't thought about this bit. <laughs> um, I'm definitely going to be tagging Sarah from Your True Shelf because I love her videos and she would make an awesome response to this. Um, uh, my reading days I think I'm going to tag although I think Sean's tagged you actually um, and I think Sean's tagged Sean from Shani Reads so I think he's tagged the people I would normally tag but I'm definitely going to tag Sarah and then anybody else who wants to do it um, feel free to do it okay I'm done thank you for watching and I'll see you soon bye